Hi, my name is Aaron Reed, and I'm a systems engineer with Pavilion Data. And today, I'm going to show you how to create and assign volumes with our web interface. A quick disclaimer, everything that you see me do and complete in our web interface can also be done using our open REST APIs. OK, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is log into my web browser using Google Chrome today. Go ahead and sign in. When you first sign into our system, you basically land on our dashboard. Our dashboard shows you all the health metrics across our system, along with all the performance metrics. We have a couple small jobs running, showing you just over 1 million IOPS, a latency of 109 microseconds, basically a tenth of a millisecond, and then with our throughput, just over 4.5 gigabytes per second. Pretty small workload for us, considering this system only has two controllers, and we support up to 20 controllers. Now that I've done my marketing pitch, let me go ahead and jump into where we actually create our volumes. So let me go ahead and go to storage. I'm going to go to volumes. And our volumes page is where we will create our volumes. And inside of our volumes page, you also can see the capacity of all your volumes and the performance metrics, just like you can see on our dashboard. So I've clicked on volume two with media zone set one. And you can see this volume by itself is supporting 608,000 IOPS with 118 microseconds and 2.4 gigabytes per second throughput. And here's the metrics that I'm talking about. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and create some volumes. Uh, today I'm going to create five volumes. You can create one volume at a time, but I want to show you how we can create multiple volumes at a time. I'm going to go ahead and use my media group MGZ1, which stands for Media Group Zone 1. In our system, you can support to four zones, and each zone can support 18 NVMe SSDs. So Media Group Zone 1. By default, they're all set up with RAID 6. I'm going to go ahead and create five volumes. And then I'm going to enter my volume names. I'm going to enter a volume prefix. And once I set the prefix, it'll incrementally add the volume numbers behind that. So let's go ahead and go AR media group one dash vol. And then it'll add the volume numbers behind that. The next step is to assign my capacity. By default, our capacity is 100 gigabytes. You can make that up to a terabyte, two terabytes however much space you have available. The max size here for that media group set, um, the data that's left that's usable, is 8.2 terabytes. So at most, with five volumes, I could probably get just under, I don't know, one and a half terabytes, or just around one and a half terabytes per volume. So we'll just go ahead and use 100 gigabytes. And then my reservation is my space that I want to put aside for snapshots. If I want to have some snapshots on for each of these volumes, I might want to set that reservation down to 70 or 80 or even 90% depending on how much space I want to set aside for those snapshots, how long I'm going to keep those snapshots for, and how busy my data is. Today, we'll just leave it at the default 100. And then the last thing when creating a volume is you can en enable encryption. You don't have to enable encryption. You can do it at a per volume, which is really nice. So encryption, we do at the OS le level. It's done in software. We're not dependent on um, SSDs that have self-encrypting drives. So that gives us a lot of flexibility on what types of SSDs you want to use in our system. The, the downside of enabling encryption is it, there is a small performance hit. Typically, we see around 10 to 15%. Uh, but the upside is 256-bit encryption across the board, and you can do it per volume. Today, we'll go ahead and leave that off, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, the volume operation window takes a few seconds to run, especially since we're creating five volumes. And let's see if we see the volumes. OK, here they are popping up now. You can see my first volume is already created. So I'm going to go ahead and start working with that volume while it creates the remaining four. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that volume. Let me uncheck that volume that we were on. Now I'm on that highlighted volume. I can go ahead and assign it to a controller. The reason I want to assign it to a controller, because one, I want to give it its protocol. The protocol is assigned to the controller. And two, it has to have an IP address where my end host can connect to it. So let's go ahead and click Assign. And in here you see I have two controllers on this system for that media set. I'm going to go ahead and highlight both of those controllers. The reason I want to highlight both of those controllers is I want this volume to be HA. So if one controller fails, it'll automatically fail over to the secondary controller. The cool thing about this window is you can see the, th the throughput supported on the I.O. ports on that controller. So these are 100 gigabit. Um, you can see my IP addresses. Those are the IP addresses that you would connect to with your end host, your MAC address, and then also the controller number, controller 1 and controller 2. And then what protocol is supported on that controller? Today, our controllers support one protocol each. We support multiple protocols, NFS, iSCSI, MVME over Rocky, MVME over Fabric. And, and these controllers are set up with MVME over Rocky. 
So we're going to go ahead and use those. And then down here in the selected I.O. ports option, you can see the preferred path. That's to be my, my active controller. And then my secondary path will be my failover controller. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You can see it's assigning, and now that volume is online. Basically, that volume is now ready to use. If we go down to the volume summary, we can see the volume name, the serial number for that volume, the media group that it lives on, the total size, and the protocol that it's using, and then the port number. If you want to do the sign, the port number, if you had that security on your, on your, um, your end hosts when connecting. To connect to this volume, it's basically two commands. It's NVMe CLI discover and NVMe CLI connect, and you're connected to that volume. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video, and I'll see you next time.